tell me if I'm crazy, but what do you think about us actually having a baddest motherfucker in the game belt? Back in November 2019, Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz battled for the newly acclaimed BMF belt, which Masvidal was able to capture. Hey, Tried to survive here early. Big first minute for Masvidal. With Dana White announcing that the belt was one of one, no other fighters were able to make a claim for it, or simply for that prestigious title of baddest mother. But do we think these are the actual two baddest motherfuckers in the UFC? I know my man, the gangster man. He ain't no West Coast gangster. With detailed research, the MMA community's opinion, and a mind of a hardcore UFC fan like myself, I was able to find out who are actually the three baddest motherfuckers in the UFC. Welcome to the fighting business. I appreciate you taking a couple minutes of your day to spend it with me, and I hope you stick around for all our future videos. Now before we get into the actual list of the baddest motherfuckers in the UFC, I think it's only fair to determine what exactly are the criteria that I base my list upon. What exactly defines a BMF and what are the traits in these fighters? Number 1. Risk Taker Now a BMF is obviously one that enjoys to compete, but even further, one that is willing to take risk for such competition. Whether it's a risk for their health, risk for their rankings, risk to take unwinnable fights, and risk to be humiliated in front of hundreds of thousands of fans, a BMF is willing to take these crazy risks and reap the rewards that comes with it. Number 2. Activity One of the most important components of being a BMF fighter is taking every opportunity that comes your way. An active fighter who is not one to back down from a challenge and willing to step up no matter the circumstances, with success, fame, and money, most fighters have become a bit more comfortable and you can't even blame them for it but there are still a few left that still find the drive and motivation to push for more. Number 3. Winners When I say winners, I don't mean success. A BMF does not require to be successful. In fact, most of them are driven by it and use the illusion of success to push themselves forwards. But a BMF needs to be good at what he does, and in the case of fighting, able to win some fights. With the understanding of what a true BMF is, and what I base my list upon, let's get into the three baddest motherfuckers in the UFC. Number one, Max Holloway. On paper, you put down my stats, no one's gonna pick me in a fight. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is this guy? <laughs> Freaking next, you know what I mean? Right. But but then but then there's one thing, there's that there's that mental part. No. And that's that crazy land part. Based on all the criteria that comes up with being a BMF, Max Holloway definitely fits into that category. He is known for his toughness inside the cage, but also has shown his willingness in the UFC to fight anybody, anytime, and anywhere. Showing his willingness to take a short notice fight in a bigger division against the pound for pound greatest fighter in the world at that time, Khabib Nurmagomedov, showed that Max is a true competitor and fears no challenges. For Max, it's gonna be a long night. I respect him, you know, it's gonna be a long night. Unfortunately, the fight couldn't play out due to medical issues with Max, but his intentions were seen and clearly heard by the MMA community. Later battling Dustin Poirier for the interim gold at 155 pounds, he has shown that he is down and ready for any challenges coming his way. Hey, I'm not gonna take nothing away from Dustin. He beat a world champ, he is a world champ, there ain't no intro. Obviously, Max has had tremendous success in the UFC, winning featherweight gold and as one of the greatest featherweights of all time. Holloway knocks down Jose Aldo! Ortega to transition to But most importantly, Max has failed many times, and that is part of the reason why he is on this list, taking losses and never shying away from them never letting them affect him or his career. First and foremost, I gotta thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second of all, I got, I got a lovely son at home. Baby, Rush, you got another gold one, baby. As of now, Holloway has agreed to number one contender fight with Yair Rodriguez in November. Thing is, he doesn't even need it. He wants to prove to the world he deserves another crack at the title and is willing to put himself at risk simply to reap bigger rewards. A true champion at heart, with competition as his motivation, Max shall be an influence to a lot of us and other fighters to keep striving for more, never settle for less, and never back down from a challenge. Number 2. Gilbert Burns Gilbert Burns might be a surprise to a lot of you, but when you look at the path of his career, he is the definition of a BMF. Well, these MMA guys are usually pretty good at this point. Like not not like world class, but like they're very very good. Mm -hmm. And then Gilbert gets down there. Oh yeah. And you're like, oh right, he's one of them. This man has taken important losses at lightweight and welterweight, and always found a way to get back up. With the welterweight division that has been extremely stagnant, top contenders not willing to fight one another, and excuses left and right for why fights are not happening. 
Gilbert Burns has been almost annoyingly saying yes to every single challenge coming his way. Not waiting, not sitting sideline, and screaming that he deserved this or that. Hey guys, every time that I step right here, I try to get a finish. It's a complicated one. Let's go, boo, I don't care, let's go. More, I need more, let's go, I don't care. Going out and earning it the right way. Gilbert Burns, although not the most popular fighter on the roster, has gained a lot of respect from me and the MMA community with his actions in and out of the ring. A true fighter at heart, no complaining or arguing. I'm here to do one job and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Number three, Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker. Dan fucking Hooker. The reason why this video is being made in the first place. I have not been a fight fan for a long time, but I can tell you that I've never seen a more badass fighter than Dan Hooker. What more can Dan Hooker do? The guy's perfect. From his fights in itself, with Dustin Poirier, Edson Barbosa, Paul Felder, and many more, Dan Hooker has proved to us his toughness inside of the cage, and he's always a treat to watch. But Dan not only could be recognized as the baddest motherfucker inside the cage, I would argue he also has the baddest motherfucking mindset. He never shies away from any situation or problem, never finds excuses for his incompetencies, and always finds a way to make it happen. Is there anything that Dan Hooker could do to make us value him as a competitor more than this? At UFC 266, Dan was booked to fight Nasrat Hakparast in a lightweight bout in which he was not yet given a visa to fly out of the country. With the help of social media, Dan was able to arrive the night before weigh-in, find time to cut weight, find time to sleep and get prepared for a fist fight, and find the energy jet-lagged and rushing this country to fight another man in front of thousands of fans. Would you be able to do it? Dan Hooker, I mean, he just he just got one by the skin of his teeth. I mean, that's what you would think. He barely makes it into the country in time to barely get to the scale. I don't know when he slept. Must have been jet-lagged. Not one excuse from Dan and coming out dominating the whole fight. Meanwhile, Rafael Dos Santos had to pull out from his October 30th fight with Islam Makachev. And can you guess who took the fight? On three weeks notice, after being in a fist fight with another man three days earlier, not being able to go back home to train, see his family, or recover properly. Yes, Dan fucking Hooker. I missed a couple of calls, so I called him back and agreed to the fight. I'm a happy man, I'll see you another dummy. <laughs> in the dictionary, a badass motherfucker is defined as followed. A person who fears nothing and never backs down, ever. Regardless of the situation, the only way to stop one of these people is to kill them. A bullet to the heart and another to the brain may be sufficient, but has been proven to not be enough in some cases. And he's pretty much vaulted up the people's rankings as the most beloved fighter in the sport right now because everyone thinks he's got balls of steel and no one would dare do something like this, not only on four weeks notice, not only foregoing his voucher to go back home, but also to fight one of the hottest and toughest guys at 155 pounds in some mafia. Here are the three baddest motherfuckers in the UFC. Do you agree with me? Did I miss anyone? Let me know in the comments. And remember, you're tougher than you think. Peace out.